We'll start with Sam Dean from The Telegraph. Mikael, how would you summarise your emotions right now? Magic night. Uh, what we expected, a really tough uh, opponent, really well organised, uh, very difficult to generate uh, constant momentum in the game and the way they play, and that's credit to them. Uh, we did it. We scored a beautiful goal. From there, we insisted um, probably in different ways that the way the game allows as well. And it's a huge experience for us. We had to do it at the end uh, through the penalties. We prepared well, credit to the coaches as well when they've done it. And, and obviously for David, I had uh, some difficult moments to start, but he stood up with incredible personality and ambition. And at the end, he got rewarded in his moment. You talk a lot about this being a young team still learning. What kind of boost or what kind of impact can this kind of experience make? Well, for them to do it uh, when the club hasn't managed to do it for 14 years, that tells you the difficulty of it. And the <coughs> margins are so small. And uh, we found a way to do it again. And um, I see how much they want it and how much they try. They are able to sacrifice anything to win. And, um, and when you play like this, at the end, it's going to come your way sooner than, than later. And it happened tonight. Dalish from Hi, Mikhail. Hi. Um, you said yesterday to the fans, bring the energy, bring the noise. Have you experienced an atmosphere like that at the Emirates since you've been here? Probably not. It was amazing. Uh, from the start to the end, when they have to do that extra at the end with the penalties, apart from bringing that, they brought their brains. They were so smart, the way they did it and the way they helped us. And a uh, huge thank you, because uh, with them, we are much better. And I think today they have impacted the game in a, in a really a strong way. I'm a Kel. Um, after the first leg, the quarter manager said they wanted to play and we won. Are you satisfied that you played your way and you managed to win? That yeah, we always play. If not, I don't know how you are top of the league in the Premier League, which is the best league in the world. James, CBS. Mikko, you probably don't remember, but back in October we spoke about how there's not really much of a fixed hierarchy of penalty takers at Arsenal. You've had eight different ones from your last 14. When they were all stepping up and they'd taken a penalty before for Arsenal, were you thinking, I'm really glad that they've all had this opportunity before? I didn't think that, but it's a great point uh, and probably a great experience because that experience is uh, much more real than what we've done in the last two days, just in case we have to go through that tonight. But uh, yeah, they look really composed, the boys, and, and the way they took the penalties, it was superb. And, and David contributed in his big thing as well, so job done. Amy, Hi, Mikel, if it's all right to ask two quick questions. Firstly, did you practice penalties ahead of this yes, time? Sure. Okay. Were you very comfortable going into, the, into that? No, that? no, because <laughs> practicing the training ground, I feel they missed, by the way, yesterday, uh, not today. Um, and yeah, and you can't, we prepare everything, you know, the extra time scenario, the changes, uh, how the players have to drink and eat and all that. Uh, but at the end, you have to do it in the game, you know, what? to replicate the scenario is really difficult. Oh, total credit to the boys to so step in with that maturity, with that confidence and, and deliver the way they've done it. And how do you describe the impact, not just on the Champions League, <coughs> but your, your season as a whole, you know, to try and maintain these two immense ambitions at the same time? Do you think that tonight mattered almost twice over? Well, it's another big step, especially as a club in the last seven years. We haven't been in this competition the last 14. We haven't been where we are today. So that tells you the difficulty of it. And the best thing is we're not satisfied. We want more, and we're going to try to go through the next round, for sure. First of all, I want to talk about David. It was possibly the biggest game of his career tonight. It's taken quite a while for him to get to this stage in his career. Was that sort of the ability to cope under those high-pressure moments? Was that something you identified him when, in him when you, when you wanted to sign him? And is that why you think he did so well tonight? Yeah, well, I don't have to see him today. I was very convinced that that was going to be the case. And you see him the first few days uh, here, what he had to go through and how he did it, with what composure. You look at his body language and decision that he takes. Um, he doesn't get very affected, and, and that's a key quality for a goalkeeper. Nick from the Guardian. You haven't um, managed a tight, tense Champions League tie like this before. Your players haven't played in one, most of them anyway. What do you think? you'll have learned from these two legs that you didn't know <coughs> before? I have no experience on that. Never done it, as you said. And uh, it's the first time that uh, I'm doing it in the Champions League and, and try to learn every single day, uh, get advice. That's why you have great coaches around you, great people around you as well to help you and make you better. Um, Mikel, penalty shootouts are very exciting, but should we have needed one? Because 
we couldn't really see much wrong with Odegaard's goal that was chalked off. Could you understand why? No, I haven't seen the replay though. Um, yeah, live I could not understand, but Wesley made that decision. Maybe it was something there. Um, I'm sure we're not going to remember that, and we're going to remember that we did it in, in another special way. Okay, last two now. James against the end. Mikel, when you get to the quarter-final stage, can you start to think about winning it? I think it's still very far, and uh, and now I'm going to sit at home and I'm going to look at the teams and who do we have to play, and and you start another big mountain to climb. What, what does winning this tie mean for the for the Premier League? Because if you'd gone out tonight and the mental blow that would have been to have to recover from it, it's the opposite, isn't it? The momentum of that can give you domestically. Yeah, that's the way that we have to look at it right now. If you are out, you think, well, one less competition, we can focus on the league and we're going to have more time to prepare against. Now is the energy that it brings um, amongst the squad, amongst the club as well. I think it's uh, really powerful, really use it. And finally, RTP Portugal. Yes, I'm uh, Miguel. Um, 14 years later, uh, you got it. And now, what do you expect uh, uh, from this Champions League? And could you tell us what happened between you and Sergio Conceição on the pitch after the game? Yeah, really, really happy, obviously. Um, we want more. And uh, let's wait. Uh, who do we have to play again? And, uh, and no comment. Thank you so much. Thank you.